Hey, second position people. Um, I'm just going to take you through uh, parts of page four and five from String Builder Second Position. Um, I'm going to start, probably just do some of the little songs in it rather than running through all the exercises because I think by now, having studied third position, you guys should be able to work out um, the scales and also super important that you are following the fingering. I keep saying this to you in your lessons. You must, must, must look at the fingering now. It's really important because that is how you know when to change positions. Okay, so this is exercise 11, Carnival, which is in C major, so just watch out for your, your tuning and your, um, your key there. Okay, so some of the bits that you need to probably think about in that one is anywhere um, where you've got to do a string cross, but I think most of that one, you're pretty much staying on the same string most of the time. So that's not too bad. Um, a happy thought, you've got a guide note at the start of happy thought. Again, this is C major. Um, we have to be careful in the first line of a happy thought with the A sharp and then cross to G. Let's do the string cross. You need to raise your fourth finger. Um, and then later on in the second line, that raised fourth finger goes back to the F natural. You need to be careful about that. Um, I don't think there's anything else in there that's, that's too tricky, just a lot of fourth finger. Okay, so you can do your guide note. What to do is maybe just tap. You can hear that, you can hear the note C. And then move your finger, check you're in tune. You can maybe even do a scale to get that third finger in tune. So here's happy thought. If you do all the repeats and do the decapo, and when you do the decapo, you don't do the repeats on line one and two, you just go straight on to the fine. So decapo al fine, remember capo meaning head in Italian. Go back to the beginning and uh, finish at fine. Um, I think a few people normally struggle with the etudes in these ones. I'll just do a little quick blast just so that if you want to play along, you know what to do for the etude. This is number 13 on the same page, page five. <laughs> Okay, so you can spot the obvious mistake there. Um, so when you do that one, you need to have a low fourth finger when you're on the A string for F natural. But when you go over, 
onto the D string for the fourth finger. So this is the low fourth finger on the A string. Then reach. Reach for the fourth on the B. So not a Miss Hunter, I made a bit of a mistake there, but I'm gonna keep this uh, video rolling because otherwise I'm gonna be here all day trying to upload these. Um, right, um, going over onto page six, we are looking at a different bowing style. So instead of all this legato slurring, uh, we're looking at doing the martelet stroke. Now martelet means, martelet bowing means that you press in at the beginning of the stroke, then you, you, you're you gonna release the pressure. So what you should be seeing is your the stick of your bow going down into the hair of the bow. And just for uh, those of you who are still having struggle, struggling with problems with this, you must have the hair of the bow flat on the string. We shouldn't have our um, our bows leaning either towards the, the fingerboard or coming back towards the bridge. That's madness. Okay, keep the, the bow, the hair of the bow as flat as you can. For So for back to the martelly bowing, you want to lean in and then release. So we lean in and release, Re lean in and release. So in number 15, you've got that dotted rhythm. So you're gonna think walk, skipping, walk, walk. Walk, skipping, walk, walk. So I'd advise you trying that in an open string first just to get the bowing and then you can think of the fingering. Uh, the worst bit in this one, I would say, is doing the string crossing from A to E string um, at the, the end of the first line. You really, really need to get that fourth finger going over. Um, so you go four, three, four, three. I would practice that first of all. Four, three, four, three, and then four, two, four, two. Remember that a lot of um, violin practice is not about going from the beginning right to the end. You need to take out little sections and go over it. So, so back to that, so four, three, four, three. Then try putting it together. And then do the four notes in one bow. I'm going to do it in the up bow because that's how it lies in the music. So then you practice the whole bar. And it happens that it does actually happen twice anyway in the music. Okay, so I'm going to play from the beginning of the Triumphant March. Again, um, the second bar from the end in Triumphant March, you've got um, a high fourth finger, but then it goes back to the low fourth finger, so be very, very careful with your intonation there. So that was number 15, the Triumphant March. Yuletide, much the same. Uh, this time the Grand Martelet using the entire bow, leaving a clean stop between each Martelet stroke. Um, hmm, it's quite tricky to do this with a full bow. Um, again, a few wee string crosses. I'm just going to play this through once for you. as you can um, in between those. 
Hey, I'm just going to do one last page here. Um, so we're thinking page seven, uh, thinking in different keys. You've got D major key and we've got G major. Now, uh, pizzicato piro, you're doing left hand pizzicato. That's something that we did to strengthen the fourth finger. And they've even got a bit of third finger pizzicato in here as well. And the second finger. So please, please, please make sure you're doing pizzicatos on the right fingers as well. Um, you've got more of the little intonation studies. Um, number 17 is an intonation study to make sure you can shift. And do a wee double stop there as well. Uh, just watch those double stops. They can be quite tricky. Right, Easter time. Just looking at that. Um, I don't think there's anything too tricky in that one. Just some quick quavers. So let's have a go with that. <laughs> so think about the F sharp there. Also the B, the B could be a place where you really just stretch that. Stretch your fourth finger out there, so I'll go again from there. And stretch. Pizzicato Piro starts off in second position. So. So again, just what I said about making sure you're using the right fingers. I uh, hope some of this has helped and I'll keep you going in the meantime. Um, yeah. Uh, if you've got any questions or there's something that you specifically want me to do, actually that would really help me as well. Um, if there's something that you specifically want, you've got a question about a specific piece, please start engaging with the Google Classroom um, and ask me. So if there was anything in this video that you didn't understand or um, that you would want me to make another video about, that's absolutely fine. Or if you get past page seven um, and you want me to go over that, that's absolutely fine. Give me some pointers. Because um, obviously as the weeks go on, people may, I don't know, you may be going crazy. You might be practicing your violin two hours a day, you know, because it's, you know, time drags when we're on uh, social distancing. So um, people are going to progress at different rates. So by all means, please, um, ask me some questions, please start engaging with the Google Classroom. That's what it's there for. Um, so that was second position up to page seven. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've got something out of it. Goodbye for now.